now the fun part. <laughs> Prevent students from getting to crisis. So we want to go upstream and focus on three goals with these activities I'm going to share with you. We want to build connection and belonging. We want to build coping skills and critical thinking skills and promote help seeking as a sign of strength. There are a lot of things we can do, but we're going to focus on mainly those three. Number one, building connection and belonging being the most important. So you can actually help prevent suicide without ever mentioning the word suicide in your classroom. And I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just saying that let's say you bring in a, a funny 60 second video of a baby laughing and it's just hilarious or a stupid cat video and the class laughs. Even that laughing together, creates that connection and belonging. And it's one of the few places that we have left that we can facilitate that connection and belonging. And I would love for you to try some of these ideas. This is a game called Roll the Dice, Say Something Nice. <clears throat> and it's a quick game. You can go down your roster and do four students per day for each day of the week or however many times your class meets. So the kids learn to focus on the positives and not just the negatives in their life. So basically they roll the dice, whatever number it is, let's say it's four, what activity always cheers you up? And it's not an exercise to promote toxic positivity, but it is an exercise to get them to not just focus on the negative things happening in their lives. Another favorite game that I like to play, and this one, these post-it notes are from an online activity, but I've played this most in person. And it's called the I Struggle With Exercise. And they put a post-it note and they put one thing that they struggle with and no more than two post-it notes per person. And then they post them on the wall. Now, I would suggest you do this game after sharing some story of vulnerability, because otherwise they're going to be kind of surface things and not, not real <laughs> things from the heart. And you're going to get a better sort of reaction if, if you have a story to tell first. Following that activity, I usually talk about healthy and unhealthy coping strategies. And then I ask the class to name what are some unhealthy ones, and then we talk about healthy ones. Every once in a while, they'll put the wrong thing in the wrong column. And retail therapy is one of those they'll put in a healthy coping strategy. Well, I never tell them you're wrong. <laughs> what I do is I merely kind of encourage them by asking them questions. And usually a student will pipe up and go, you know, then I wouldn't have enough money to like pay the electrical bill or something like that. So that's probably unhealthy because I don't have enough money to go buy something every time I'm stressed. So here are some of the coping strategies that students have met, mentioned over the years. I love the first one, reading fart jokes. <laughs> Writing and journaling, being outdoors, acts of kindness, riding my bike, listening to each other. I like it when they get even more specific than like being outdoors and saying rock climbing because that gives other kids ideas. 